Okay, one more question we've got. What's Matt's background and motivation behind his fish keeping career and his biggest success stories so far? Yeah, so, well, yeah, like I said, my, my starting point was my, my family being into it. Like, my motivation behind it, it didn't, I suppose it just started off as a job because, like, I enjoyed fish. And, and then all of a sudden I worked out that in the shop I could help you know, 10 people a day and they'd go home and they'd enjoy their aquariums. And that was always the success and the fun bit for me was seeing someone go away and then coming back and going, that plant you told me about growing great or those fish have bred down. That was my motivation to keep yeah, going. It's so rewarding that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You know, when I was dealing with a few hundred people a week, it was amazing because you're like, oh my word, I'm having a difference. And people would come back and see you. And yeah, yeah that was that was my big thing. And then I suppose as soon as then I got this platform i suppose you would say via md and then people started asking me on his channel for info and they wanted me to do info i realized that i could help thousands of people and yeah okay the local population of fish keepers i don't help now by being in the shop but actually the thousands of people that watch my channel in theory can take that information and run with it and now you know my my ultimate thing is always to promote fish keeping in the way that i've always thought it should be and to grow the hobby because as i say we end up with cooler stuff we end up with more money in the hobby so more gets spent on research and the foods and the liquids and the filters get better and then it goes back and more people succeed and it's this constant thing of like growing the hobby in the industry through the right practices i suppose um but yeah that's my whole thing that's my vision for it and that's why the channel's growing and i suppose the biggest success like if it's fish keeping success i don't know we bred stingrays in the store in taunton so that was quite cool like that was a fun thing we reared the pups up and we got the pups feeding which was an absolute nightmare um but that's probably one of like the biggest fish keeping successes i've done reef tanks i've done all sorts of stuff and i suppose pond, pond builds yeah i used to do i've it's done a lot of pond builds yeah i've got my big nature pond i'm gonna be doing a pond build this year hopefully um and now my channel that's probably my biggest success now is my channel it's like yeah, 50,000 and growing strong. Yeah, 55,000 I saw this morning. Yeah, I was not, you know, 55,378. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't got a clue what it is right now. That was the number four. You know that he knows it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the one. Um, but yeah, no, I just mum. <laughs> <laughs>
they're cool. They're they're, they're um, not community, but they they like they're, they like sort of each other's yeah. company. Just yeah, I, I just think a, a few autos buzzing around is a much cooler thing. As long as there's enough food for them, yeah, yeah. You know, it goes from one way to the other. A lot of people will buy a um, an algae grazing catfish, but then not feed it. Yeah. Just expect it to get food off of grazing on the glass or sniffing around plants and gravel they, they, they will need a supplementary food but i, I personally I, I think it's a bit of a subjective choice i i'm i'm up for a, a few but if you want to keep one i guess mm. yeah i think i think they do better in groups personally but like i had nine in one of my tanks put the nine in and they shoaled really nicely they were always in the same That's group cool. and they would yeah. buzz around together and after about a month or two literally they all broke up into their like individual like there was one over here and one over here i guess they just got confident with the tank you yeah. know yeah. they are when, when they're coming out of the wild they are going to be the smallest fish in that yeah, river they're going to be low down on the food chain yeah, i know they're, going to, want to eat yeah. they're going to be low down on the food chain so once they yeah. got settled into my aquarium i don't think that they weren't worried about predators so they all just all split up you know they were just all over the place so yeah this is it is there any community fish that don't eat crebensis fry that's from chef jake it's <sighs> tricky isn't it it's nature isn't it yeah and how many hidey holes have you got for them to yeah hop in and I, I always tend to go by the rule of thumb it, 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 in nature if something can fit something else in its mouth yeah. it will probably try and then you're going to want something that the crebensis aren't going to yeah. kill. <laughs> like, yeah. you're going to, it's a, it's a yeah. tricky game. You know, but for, for argument's sake, the eight for African tank in the Made Ed Taunton store has got uh, big Congo tetras, rope fish, uh, all sorts of big tetras, all big African tetras, and African jewel cichlids. Mm. And the crebensis have had fry and protected them. And now there's about 10 that are probably an inch long. But the key to that is size of aquarium and amount yeah. of hiding space, exactly. isn't it? This is it. There's, there's safe space that, that maybe other fish can't go or can't see. Yeah. Fry inevitably will find a little tiny gap in a yeah. rock and sit there and go, right, I'm safe here. Mm. Uh, Congos can go past and I'm not being seen and they'll pick up food and they'll be able to graze as they go. Yeah. So it's, I think it's provide shelter more than try to find a fish that won't eat them. Yeah. Either that or just set up if you're really serious about about raising the fry, have another tank, keep the cribs in there and, and farm the fry from there. Yeah. Um but yeah, it's just I think it's just provide as much uh in the way of hiding safe spaces as you as you can. I'd agree, yeah. Another great question here from Big K Adams. I'm running CO two and FERTs. Should I turn off my UV on my canister filter? I never have. I can't see that the contact time, by the time it gets through to your filter, there's going to be other things in your filter that will probably do more damage, or not damage, but remove more than your UV would. I, I think that's something that, yeah, I've always been from the school of, it, it, if you're putting anything as far as supplements in your in your aquarium or pond, be it medication, be it anything, take your UVs off, yeah. turn your UVs off. I, I'm going to ask a question here, um, and maybe we can come back to yeah, come back to it. who was it asked the question? Be K Adams. We cert we certainly don't recommend turning off your UV if you're using no. But then is it is it so? Chemical in treatments would be broken down by UV, but obviously the fats are all mineral and nutrient based. Mm, I don't. I wouldn't. So, I must admit, I don't know the stability no. of those under UV though. It's not something that I've. I guess because UV in aquarium filter is 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 not mainstream. It's it, there are more filters with uvs or there are more people using uv now yeah um in filters that than, than there ever have been and yeah it's a good idea right? yeah mm. every filter should have it but what impact it's having on ferts do you know what i don't know and it's a fabulous question and it could be the difference between as well clarifier and sterilizer because it's the contact yeah, yeah that's yeah. it if you've got a clarifier that's just running a you know a low wattage bulb and the water's rushing over it and it is just to kill off those few algae spores yeah. it's not going to do anything but if you've got a full-blown system style sterilizer who knows but yeah, really yeah um yeah i would have thought it'd have enough of an effect in the home aquarium yeah i'll look into it then uh plus ez specialized asked how do you start aquascaping it's having fun. 
play with it. Doesn't matter what you do, whether, you know, I've done an aquarium with three IKEA bowls in it, balanced on some wood. You know, is it an aquascape? Well, no, it doesn't follow the rules of aquascaping. But for me, aquascaping isn't, it isn't rules because then I don't have fun. Like, so I, I just have fun with it. Start getting some pebbles. And if, you, if you're on a budget, go to a garden center and find some river cobbles because that's going to be your cheapest way into it or some slate or something. And then work with that and start building up that. Then you can move on to the expensive rocks and the different things. And yeah, for me, how you get started in aquascaping is just playing with it. And, yeah. you know, whether you start off with an empty tank and you get all your dry wood and rock and things like that and play with that first. But mm. well, I think that now because there's people like yourselves out there, influencers, uh, uh, to coin a phrase, it's you've got so much inspiration out there now you can you, you can scroll through instagram you can learn how to do things on youtube you know it's it's so much more accessible rather than back in our day when you would stand in front of the retailer and say what do i have to do and if the retailer was that was his bag then he'll tell you exactly but if he if it's not then you've got to then go to another shop and another shop yes great point paul yeah it is, it is yeah true. The, the the inspiration out there now is is endless with what, what you can find online and you know as we said people like matt um constantly reinventing and and um bringing new ideas up i, I just think it's a really exciting time yeah. to be able to inspire yourself and 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 it, you know make your own scape who's to say that escape that matt maybe does not everybody it might not be everybody's cup no. of tea but if it's what his creative juices are yeah a, a, a sort of developing at the time then great so it's i personally i like just rockscapes yeah I, I think they look incredible but um as far as yeah get inspiration have a look at shops have a look online speak to people yeah, yeah. and i'd say like you know that's the main thing is have fun with it don't stress about it don't think oh it doesn't look like such and such is on instagram because that person's probably been doing it for 10 15 20 years the internet's they? not real yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah they didn't post their first aquascape on instagram yeah, did absolutely. they like some of the aquascapes i done well, i say aquascapes you know it's really it's just aquariums it's just designing your aquarium so yeah. it's good but go in nature have a look at the rivers have a look at how the roots come down over the boulders in a river and yeah. just sort of simulate it and don't always so one thing is yeah. people always use the wood that they've got and leave it in one piece hack it up chop it up <laughs> because you can then manipulate the shape people try and put that bit of wood in and that or it doesn't really work yeah. just again chop it up don't be scared of it just have fun with it do you know what paul and i went to um an event in asia just before christmas and there was an aquascaping competition on yeah. and there were guys there was probably 30 guys and girls scaping these tanks and most of them had various sorts of rock you know you'd yeah. have a dragonstone or whatever and these guys were down on the floor with tiny little axes and hammers like chipping little bits yeah. off so they could glue it to yeah. that yeah so they could make exactly what was in their mind yeah and and so just because it's a lump of rock, it doesn't mean that, like you said, it needs to stay a lump of rock. That's your starting thing. Get about it, set about it, make it look cool. Uh, great question here from Jman9763. Jman. Some are saying the reason you moved away from MD is because he wanted you to dress up like a mermaid and be the centerpiece for his upcoming new pond build. <laughs> it was, yeah. No, I have signed an NDA on that, and I can't discuss whether it was a mermaid or something else. But <laughs> no, it, in all honesty, it comes back to what I said earlier, where I was working till two, three o'clock in the morning, and you can't keep that up for long periods of time. No. Um, so now it's yeah, you'd make a good mermaid. And the beard would get a bit weird and scraggy, wouldn't it? It's not it's weird and scraggy already, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, like when you take a dog out of a pond, it looks like it's all drowned. And, you know, like, that's what my face would look like. We'll have to put him in the pond. To play yeah, it. that's it. As soon as I read the word mermaid, it reminded me of uh, a YouTube short I saw the other day where there was this mermaid in a public aquarium somewhere, clearly breaking wind and all the bubbles coming out of the tail. <laughs> I would be him. <laughs> if the journey up here was anything to go by. Yeah. <laughs> Right, getting back on track. How much does phosphorus play a part in your tanks? James DeGarris. So it depends on... So some places in the UK have got high phosphates coming out the tap. 
and like insane amounts so you know working with that is hard because you end up with tons of algae and oh, it's just a bit of a pain but most of the time like we're very lucky where i come from we're very lucky and there's not very much the only stuff that's produced is what's pretty much produced in the aquarium or what i'm adding yeah. um so it doesn't play a great deal of sort of um in any way in my aquariums to be honest i have had people have problems with it i've got a friend who's only 10 miles down the road from me and their phosphates come out of their tap an insane level mm. um and they've had to run it through filtration and things like that to try and get it clear and clean and to would sort you of ever it. recommend then starting with ro or di and then adding the bits that's, you need yeah that's where they've had to go because they were having it was a like black beard algae actually they were having we couldn't work it out and we were like what is going on and it was just off the scale they were on like a separate water source and it was off the scale so yeah it doesn't often play a part there are people that will end up adding it to their aquarium mm. um and they'll start going down the road of add a route of like nitrates and phosphates and different elements and individually gearing each one that's probably a very small percentage of the hobby mm. and for me that like at that point it takes the fun out of it for me yeah. because i want to keep the ecosystem running i want that to look cool do i want the plant to be that perfect pink color or for every new leaf to be that poppy green color yeah. no as long as it's surviving and living and, th- and looking good yeah. i'm happy so yeah it's if you have got it in your tap water it is a pain um but you know floating plants are great duckweed would be an amazing remover for that it would yeah. yeah use it up but vegetable filters and stuff might be your way for it if you don't want to go down the filter route <sighs> so it's Ruined it all. Right, start again. Yeah. Start. Ruby. What was the first question? Hi, <laughs> right, hello, welcome to... <laughs> Short of limiting the time lights are on, are there other fish-friendly ways to limit algae growth in cold and tropical tanks? That's from Robert E. Smith. <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a number of variants, isn't it? Date, certainly light is one of them, be it um artificial light created by the the lighting system that you're using on the aquarium natural daylight yeah. down to the location of the aquarium if it's getting a lot of light generally most rooms have windows if your tank has got daylight beaming down on it it's i'm afraid it's going to cause problems like matt was saying um nutrients in the water um that are either being generated within the aquarium or that you're introducing as uh, it, it, in the first place with your with your, your your tap water um yeah there's a number of variants it, it's not just one thing it's not yeah. just amount of light it can be varied by the amount of fish in there the food that you give feed yeah. in if you you know the amount of plants that you're keeping in there there's a whole number of variants that can that can cause algae problems it's finding which one works for you isn't it at the end of the day like i remember having a one tank. Yeah. yeah i remember really discus tank i was suffering with algae in, and i ended up just putting floating plants across the top and i literally had no plants underneath it was bog wood and rocks and stuff group of discus and there was just a ton of floating plant mm. on the top and there was never any nutrients in there the algae would never grow in there because yeah that's it absolutely that's a really good phrase for it even uvs you know you might find that just having a little uv on there might just sort of spur it on and keep it but getting the plants growing most of the time is the way i do it because it's the naturalist way yeah it's trying different things to 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 eliminate the problem it could be too much light it could be location it could be nutrient it could be yeah a number of things trial and error okay it's a long one here today i bought nt labs algae gone because I have a recurring problem with brown goo gathering in the floating plants and hair algae on the planted plants. It's driving me mad. I've battled a cyanobacteria problem, which I treated and thought I'd sorted, but I'm now thinking that it's the amount of fish I have in my little tank. It's a Superfish 30, which is 27 litres, and I have eight Neon Tetra, one Otto, uh, and eight shrimp. Can you please advise how many fish would you say is the best amount to have it's the only reason left that i think is causing my problem thanks if you can get my question in blue budgie so i wouldn't have said that's too many really like it's sound like no it's it's a hard question because there's so many different calculators thrown around for 
X amount of fish. And I, I saw one the other day that I was reading through a couple of things. It was, um, they worked out the gram of fish and the gram of food wow. per fish to how much you need it. Other way. Yeah, it was, yeah. That's, that's a very aquaculture way of yeah, doing it, isn't it? it? I mean, we had to do that at college, right? yeah. working out how much optimum amount of food to get optimum amount of growth out of salmon is. But yeah, yeah it, it's, it could be as far as that. But I would say, personally, I would look at the flow rate of the aquarium. That's the first thing. That noise is uh, one of our chemists' air drawings and glassware. Okay, cool. That's fine. I just thought we were going to take off or something. Um, but yeah, I would look at flow because those tanks normally have those little tiny internal filters. Yeah, yeah. So if that brown goo is feeding on excess food or fish poo and the hair algae and things like that, it might just need to get it out and circulating. A few more water changes. Especially if it's if it's building up inside the sort of floated plant yeah. floating plant it's probably because there's not enough water circulation to move it around for the filter to trap it yeah i would say i'd look at flow and water changes i don't think there's too many fish in there i mm. i think you'd be able to maintain that so you don't have any more in yeah sounds and like you're at the, sort of the right level just be cautious with how much you're feeding and check your food as well because check, depending yeah. on if it's in day or you know depending on the quality of it as well you can sometimes find that can cause problems because if they don't digest it properly if it's not a good quality food it just comes up the other end as undigested food and yeah it's coming from somewhere it's a biomatter that's coming from somewhere you filter would normally trap it mm -hmm. it sounds like your filter the flow as matt said isn't bringing it round to to get trapped in the filter but maybe cut down a little bit on the food and increase the flow rate or change the flow rate a little bit a little air stain because that will start that's that's it about yeah 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 uh, probably the easiest question we've had today to answer from uh genie violet valentine how many tanks is too many tanks there's <laughs> never too many no, no. <laughs> I had so many over the years. Yeah, no. Yeah. Is, what was what was the name of the person who's asked that question? It's Jeannie. 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 Well, Valentine. Yeah. Jeannie, if you've got space, you haven't got enough tanks. <laughs> get another one in. Yeah. I think once it gets to the point that you're not happy with one of your tanks, as in, yeah. because that would be like, I've done it a few times where I've looked at shutting down a tank, mm. but I've got an empty one. And I'm like, why am I... Like, yeah. I'm obviously not maintaining that one right. So, yeah, there's an element that once I get to a point and I'm, like, sort of verging on the edge of, like, I'm not really happy with how that's growing in, I need to refocus on that tank, get yeah. that to 100%, then I'll do another one. I, I think I think a, a sort of bit of a sensible answer, if you like, is if it's not fun anymore. Yeah. If it's just feeling like too much of a trudge to come home and you've got... 20 tanks and they've all got to do a water change at the same time or you've put it off and now all of a sudden your, your routine is overwhelming then yeah you've probably got too many um sometimes it's worth refocusing it's, it's got to be fun it's yeah got, it's got to be enjoyable that's it's what we're the doing natural this for progression, though isn't it it's yeah. the natural progression you want more and more and more and sometimes i've got to the point where is it better to have 10 mediocre tanks or is it better to have one ultimate display tank? Mm. And I've I've done that. That's a bit like that roller coaster we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. I've done that where I've had twenty tanks, and I'm like, Do you know what? Ten of them are a bit like, yeah. I'm not really bothered yeah. by them. Yeah. So it's actually better to drop right down to one. Yeah. Get that one looking amazing, and then you can build your hobby Go up again. again. Yeah. 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 When it stops being fun, yeah. it's too many. <laughs> Yes. Good yes. Goodness. When you've got a shop. <laughs> <laughs> do you think we should do a skate together from underwater gardens? It's always, everyone should. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. If you're, a, I've, do you know what? I've had a couple of messages recently from a few shops, um, like one in London and um, one, I can't remember where, they, wherever they were. But yeah, I, if I'm ever in the area and you guys have touched base with me and I'm in the area, then yeah. Like I said, I've got very limited time in the editing and filming and my family. And so, yeah, but no, if I'm ever in the area, like hit me up. I'm, I'm game for anything. Uh, at this wise. Point, Matt's wife. You didn't come third then, behind scaping and filming, and then the family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> rewrite. So, family. <laughs> yeah. Mark, this with this, with this. <laughs> It's because I've got my escape, it's because I've got my escaping brain on today. That's all it is. I'm in fish keep mode. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> MW Scapes asks: Ever thought about a purple themed tank? 
Yeah, see, this is something I'm going more into now, is I like the, like, different styles of... I suppose I was always nature, and I started realising realizing I was doing rock, root, rock, root. And that was my thing, was this, like, building a root, because I like the edge of the riverbank, I like those tree roots coming in, I like seeing the fish interacting with it. And then I realised that, like, actually there's differences that you can start doing. So I've just done, like, the blackwater style one with all reds and pinks and even red plants coming out the top and leaf litter. Um, so, yeah, I've the, and the bowls with the blue bowls all planted up and stuff. So definitely some things I'm doing in the future that I want to like again bring people into the most mental one I ever remember and I mentioned it in the bowls video that I'd done we had a lady that used to have a tea room and she had a I'm sure it was a cichlid tank but I can't really remember but she went to every charity shop and bought loads of different cups and saucers and teapots and had them all in the bottom of her aquarium in her little tea room cafe plants growing in amongst them yeah. and there was like a teapot lying on its side and the cichlids were in it and it looked amazing and i'm like do you know what like as a themed aquarium yeah for the setting that that was in that's cool and she really enjoyed doing it it was different and so yeah there's a lot of different things like purple themed yeah absolutely because that's my that's, that's my that's my that's my thing yeah yeah there is there is uh there's a nice plant that grows i out thought it would have been all yellow and it was all yeah. <laughs> I can't help but think that your root rock root rock routine, Ruby's going to edit into some sort of rap or a meme or <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, I like that. That'll be the next. That'll be the next real T-shirt. Root rock, uh, root rock, root rock repeat. I oh, know there's another one in there, isn't that? Root rock scape repeat. There you go. See, there it is. Okay, another question from MW Scapes, which is a tricky one. What's more important, hardscape or livestock? <laughs> you can uh, do that. That's, uh, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, I think, do you know what? I, I suppose they go hand in hand, don't they, really? Like, you no, got, no, you have to choose one. Yeah, yeah, but you've got to have you've got to this chicken or egg situation, yeah. is it? Um, well, it's livestock all the time, isn't it? Because otherwise, you haven't, you haven't got anything living in there. You don't, like, want a pile of rocks in a watery tank. But as for, like, which one's more important, I suppose if you're choosing your fish, if you've got your heart set on Tropheus, you're then building the hardscape and that around them. If there's something like a guppy that's been commercially bred for years and years and wouldn't know a Central American river if it hit them in the face, and it would probably get eaten very quickly because yeah. that tail is going to hold you back, <laughs> then, you know, whatever... Whatever, <laughs> <laughs> whatever hardscape is, you know, you're going to choose is going to work with them. So I think the fish is the important thing to decide on first. That would be my... Point one, because then you know where you're going. Yeah. You know if you're going wood, plants, yeah. rocks. You know, I think the livestock is... And I'm a fish keeper at heart, you know. Yeah. As much as I enjoy the scaping, I'm... Clues in the name, then. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's a good question, though. Because a good scape, it, you can get lost in mm. without the livestock. Oh, some of these like show ones yeah. where they make it look like a forest and yeah. Um, yeah. The, one of one of the guys I speak to regularly on Instagram um, Errolscapes he done one that was like he done it for it was his first just so West Country sometimes Errol. he done one he done one <laughs> <laughs> what up was <laughs> it was only small but by the time he had finished it it was like it looked like it was four foot deep I was like yeah. and it was his first I think it was his first like um, competition scape he was doing and then you start looking at the other ones that have been doing it for years, and you're like, I just can't, you yeah, know. They but, just disappear off into the distance, yeah. don't they? Yeah, I don't think I've got the mental capacity to go that stick because you need to scale and, yeah. oh, no, I can't. Death of fear. Yeah. Yeah. Making something look like something else yeah. is hard. I think I'm going to be really rubbish with the answer and say, if scape's your thing then scape's more important. But if livestock, if keeping animals are in there, then they're more important. Yeah. I think it's so difficult to say that or that. Yeah. I love just getting, like I said, getting lost in scapes. Um, some of them are so cool, they don't necessarily need other stuff in there. But I'm all about the live things. Fish and shrimp, it's got to be. We've got to put a lost in music over to that. Lost in scapes. Yeah. I was going to start singing them, but you don't want that to happen. 
Paul will start busting his moves to the other camera <laughs> and nobody wants to see that. <laughs> okay, a few more questions here from... Uh, uh, no, we're f***ing out. You are right, lad? Yeah. Chip shop, Matt. <laughs> don't f***ing say that. In a western town in a dead end world. <laughs> East End boys and chip shop, man. We've, we've had a few more questions come in from Matt's uh, YouTube channel. This is from Nick. How not to get overwhelmed with tank failures? What's wise advice and encouragement? Oh, that's a great yeah, that's question. A cool question. Because you do invest in what you're doing. You do get emotionally invested yeah, in it for yeah. sure. You do, and when, you know, especially if, you know, creatures that you're trying to care for are, are, are dying and there's no reason you're doing your best. Especially if it's like a power cut as well. Or yeah, when it's out of your hands. Something like that you just can't control. Yeah, yeah. I, I think my answer for that is, if you find out how, can you tell me? Because I don't know. Uh, it, yeah. you, you just do. You just emotionally invest in these things. I think it's always going to upset you. And that's where those peaks and drops of fish keeping, like yeah. I was saying, you, you sort of go through these like, oh, man, I can't do this anymore. But I think, like, learning from it is always the way. Like, if it's if it's a heater's gone wrong, well, you're probably not buying that brand of heater again. Mm. And, or having a backup. Yeah, or having a backup. Yeah. Or, you're, or you're, again, you get what you pay for. So mm. investing in something that's a little bit, higher brand you know and things like that and i'd think learn from your mistakes isn't it like we've all been doing it a long time it's you know not putting fish like getting that fish you go to the shop and there's a weird fish in the corner i've, I've done it yeah. and you're like oh my word and you ask someone and they're like yeah it'd be fine Does, <laughs> you know yeah it'd be right mm. and then you take it home and you research it and it's, it's a absolute thug. devil yeah. you know and things like goliath that. tiger fish or something but you know once i'd done that and that was on black ghost knife fish i got caught out <laughs> the person in the shop this was what 18 years ago probably yeah. person in the shop yeah they live great in pairs Mm, they don't and they don't live great with guppies either um but they were small and i think what's I really from it. i think what's really telling for me is asking multiple people's advice yeah you can matt was saying about um some maybe poor advice from the shop but some advice that i've read on online as well is <sighs> just shocking um and if you largely if you see it in print you believe it yeah um, but always, always ask two or three people yeah. and get a, a, a minority. Oh, sorry, a majority opinion. Because just because one person says, "Yeah, that's the right fish," or yeah. "Yes, you can use this or that product to do that," it, it, it's not always the case. So. Yeah. Ask your local fish shop, yeah. ask it online, ask experts. That's it. You can go you and Google just... and find the information now. That's the one good thing we've yeah. got now is there's so many people and so many good people putting out content there. If you see three people doing saying the same thing and they're all big... And know, they're all saying the same as the guys in the shop, yeah, then you know it. that's probably... Yeah, you need better. multiple sources of information. Don't rely on one. Yeah. Don't rely on Brenda 45 from Solly Hull uh, yeah. telling you the ins and outs of... I think that's it, isn't it? The reading life can errors. be terrible. Like, I've seen a few things where, you know, there was one person asked a question the other day, and all of a sudden there's, like, five different answers within the first five minutes. All saying different stuff. And you're like, oh, my word. And for me, again, about growing the hobby and growing the industry... That doesn't help because, you know, yes, okay, you might have done it that way and it might have helped or worked, but actually you were very lucky in the way that that mm. happened. And, yeah. yeah, I think just not getting overwhelmed, it's just picking yourself back up. It's a bit like learning to ride a bike, isn't it? You know, you'll fall off half a dozen times and you just got to get back up and go, do you know what, it's something I want to do. Let's power through this. And, yeah. you know, you're going to have down days. It's going to happen. Yeah. Ask advice, get more inspiration. Another good question here from Susan. What fish to keep in a cold water tank? Well, I can't mount in minnows. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> That's what John had in his, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. just so cool. There's so many now, though. There's so many yeah. that we're learning about that are way better with a cooler temperature than, like, they are a hotter temperature. Like, mm. the wild-coloured honey gouramis, Yeah, they do so well in an indoor, unheated aquarium. Yeah, Rice fish, like, you can get some amazing colours of rice fish now. Um, like, obviously, it's illegal to keep them outdoors. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, you have to be careful. But... Indoors, like, yeah. you can get some amazing different there, colours. There are, certainly since the cost of living... Um, challenges that we've all faced there are there's a much larger focus within the hobby on temperate yeah. water fish or cool water fish i try to avoid the word cold water yeah um 
because once you've got it in a home, certainly through the winter, your central heating's on, yeah. the, the, the temperature of the tank will naturally come up to, to meet the environment. And there is some cool fish there. There is there's some there's some cool chances. Yeah, that's it. I'm gonna do yeah, I'm gonna do some more videos on that to be fair, because I've been wanting to start doing temperate style stuff and again it's when the expansion happens. But mm. yeah, there's definitely some some cool stuff out there. And you know, like you say, they're not cold water, they're in your house. So a lot of these fish, when they're coming from these little rivers and things like that, yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah. getting a rainfall up river and all of a sudden it's flushing it's through and it's like coming right by degree. Down. Glacial melt water coming down yeah there's so many different variables i think we're now learning that fish aren't you know not all fish live at 25 degrees mm. in the wild it doesn't happen all the time yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, avoid goldfish unless you've got a massive tank yeah um it, yeah i mean i started with goldfish in a in an aquarium mm. and I think most of us are. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I started off with goldfish. Yeah. Again, a natural progression from 20 years ago, isn't it? It's 20, years ago. 20 thanks, Matt. Oh, did, well, mine's 10. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I was just getting... Um, yeah, it's a good question, though. <laughs> Another good question here from uh, Rob. I've been keeping fish for quite some time now and have two mature tanks, but I constantly struggle with pH, KH, and nitrates. I try to keep my tanks as undisturbed as possible, so don't do massive water changes. Should I start doing heavier water changes? So it depends what you mean. If your pH is dropping and your pH is dropping, it's probably just the maturity of the tank constantly. Like everything generally in an aquarium is trying to soften the water. Your fish poo, your plants, your breaking down of everything. Yeah. Just naturally. So if he's suffering with stuff that's lower, test your tap water. That's, if, yeah. If your tap water's good, as in a good pH, then start doing little water changes. I wouldn't go drastic because you could end up going from a pH of, without knowing, pH of yeah. six to eight and everything goes which, which isn't a change of two by the way no. it's not two points it's like thousands of yeah, points yeah it's a logarithmic scale isn't it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember it's like every point is a hundred times different or something. yeah yeah it'd be like taking us from here to Everest in the next ten minutes yeah yeah, yeah. it wouldn't be fun no uh, but it's not what you're suffering with I'd say it sounds like almost like old tank syndrome sort of style thing where everything in the aquarium is just naturally breaking down acidifying everything your nine tricks are rising because there's a lot of waste in there um, but if your fish are living in it, they're obviously happy with it. And then if you go change it for clean water that's of a higher pH, it could actually swing you in the other direction and then causing you trouble. So yeah. lots of, I would do one water change a week, maybe 10, 25%, start trickling it a lot. And test your water as well so you can see what effect that's having. I think, yeah, I think that's the most important thing. Monitor the water that you're putting into the tank as yeah. well. Because yeah. if you're, if you're, KH is is low coming out of your tap, which it is in some parts of of the country or the world, wherever you are. Um, you're going to need to buffer that because without a stable buffer, it, I'm sorry, without a stable KH, you know that's the building blocks of the complete life system in the aquarium. So test the water that you're putting in. Just know know what you're putting into it. As Matt said, old tank syndrome. Absolutely, that's that's such a thing. But yeah, just make sure you know what you're putting in as well. There's a real uh, unanswerable question here, I think. Um, this, is, yeah, that sounds this is from Jim. I'd like to know what is the best way to convince my wife <laughs> that there is no such thing as too many tanks and how to persuade her to let me have a big setup in the lounge? Uh, hypnosis. <laughs> Or it's handbags and shoes, isn't it? It's an offset there. Do what I did. And fair, I'm saying that. You're saying handbags and shoes. Be divorced. I have had this conversation the other way around where, like, the lady is trying to get the husband to have more fish tanks. And he's like, That's definitely a thing. Yeah, yeah I've encountered like, that. So yeah. It's, it's such a hard question to ask. Um, but it depends on their thing. It, yeah. Some people's matching furniture. Some people... They don't like the the cheap flat pack style of aquarium, yeah. so you might have to go for a more premium aquarium and talk them into it by yeah. making it tie into the home. I think try and sell it as well with pictures that you see on Instagram, you know, and, and really try don't and... show them pictures of Matt because that's not going to inspire anything. <laughs> you don't. Know that. I, I think no. I, I inspire me daily, Matt. <laughs> it's. Um... I think though, actually, another thing as well is if you go, if you take them to a shop. And it's got that, what you were saying, 1990s fish shop smell. Yeah. And 
every tank's got a bit of algae in it and every tank's got a dead fish in it like that is going to be their first impression of fish deeping yeah. And then all of a sudden they go, well, I'm not having this slimy, scummy, horrible... Smelly thing in the but corner of my... There yeah. are so many good fish shops out there yeah. that you walk into, and even me now, having done it so long, and like you said, you were saying about the one that you walked into with the yeah. Fantosas. If you walk into a shop like that, and they see that, and they're like... And they sit and they mesmerise themselves, then that's the way to inspire it. In, in yeah. Inspiring natural aquariums, well, not even natural, inspiring aquariums that they can see and you can picture that in your home then. Yeah. Oh, we can have this wood that matches the sofa. Mm. Yeah, they've got, to be, they've got to be part of it. Whichever, you know, partner you're trying to convince, they've got to be a part of it. They've got to feel invested in it because if they don't, they're just going to, you know, the bloody tank, well. bloody fish tank. I think that's right. Yeah, getting the right inspiration and, and going to, a, you know, research some nice shops near you and, yeah, go to those, I think will be the best way. I remember going to a shop over in Ireland um, a few years back and they had an, a, a whole room where each corner of the room was set up as like a different lounge style. Uh, um, and within that, they'd put, you know, an, a, a different type of aquarium in each set. They had like a sort of modern lounge and then a sort of cottagey lounge. And I thought, God, this is genius idea. Yeah, it's a perfect way to do it. There is so many different species of fish, though. You'd be hard pushed unless they literally physically hate fish. Like, <laughs> and then you're not going to win. To the extent of like, <laughs> that, no, you're never going to win. But there are so many different species of fish. Like... My my wife's not majorly into fish keeping, but she'll walk around the shop and you're, oh, I love them. They're cool. Like, and once you've got that, yeah, well, that comes to that. That's your, yeah, that's your, that's your signal. Yeah. 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 Okay, you like them? Cool. Yeah. Unfortunately, mine. Katie walked into the shop a couple of months back and she's like, "What them zebra placos? Oh, fantastic! Just hundred and fifty quid a pop. You know? Yeah, we'll have a group of them. <laughs> a small show. Yeah, that'll be lovely. Otherwise, hypnosis. <laughs> <laughs> or divorce or watching a lot of Strictly because you're going to have to build up a lot of points to be able to get a new aquarium or you just do it when they're away and hope for the best hope they don't notice yeah. you know that your wife sneaks shoes into the house gym when you're not watching <laughs> just do the same with an aquarium say no love it's always been there yeah. don't know what you mean <laughs> nice question here from Mini I would love your take on successfully turning a clear air tank with a sump system into a planted tank it's so deep okay so um that if that sounds like it's quite a deep tank to be honest plants on bog woods so that's going to be your best way is you're going to struggle depending on the lighting you're going to have to either invest a lot of money in in say in lighting to get down to the bottom or you write off the bottom, mm. you put loads of rocks and interesting structure at the bottom, so you've got the bottom of the riverbank style. And then as you go up through, you've then got your epiphytes growing on all the bits of wood coming up into, on top of the tank. I've done a tank once, it was a four foot, and I bought probably 10 bits of bog wood and a, must have been about 50 suction cups, loads of stainless steel screws. Mm. And I just screwed the suction cups to the bog wood, mm. stuck it up the bottom, back of the tank, mm. and then I had plants growing up all the back of the tank. Yeah, um, the sump system won't hurt. Like you'll you'll gas off a little bit of CO two and stuff, but ultimately, your sump if you've got a sump running on it, like an old marine tank, or a marine tank. Yeah, yeah, you'll be fine on that. I would just do it with the plants. Yeah, but, take take the plants to the light rather than trying to get the light to the fish. Yeah, uh, right to the plants rather. And you yeah. could build you could build platforms. You know, if it's a deep tank, you know, come up a foot with a deep sand bed sort of thing yeah, yeah. like boxed into the back yeah, and it's going to get you closer you'd probably get a few stem parts in there yeah yeah are Amano shrimps really the best algae eaters what about the red nose shrimp many claim that red nose is better than Amano it's a hard one because it depends on the type of algae and things like that like I had some Amanos eating some black beard algae the other month right. and they're like literally I'd start a piece of wood at the top of the tank like this far away from a light and it just got covered I'm like I've got like it looks quite cool and, and I put a group of about 10 amados in there about a week later patches start appearing that was like missing in the black bit and I'm like that's weird is it just dying off one day I the light turned on while I stood there and there's all the manos in the night time were just sat there Pulling yanking it out, yeah, um, and they ate it all. But I've never seen them do that before. Yeah, and everyone's like, "I wonder, mind to eat black bit 
Um, so every think, tank is different. Yeah, I mm. think having for me, I have a I have a mixture. I'll have a group of Otto Sinclair or a couple of bristle noses, depending on the tank size, and then I'll have some Amano shrimps and maybe some red nose shrimps and cherry shrimps as well, because they're all going to do a slightly different job. D for Gash wants to know why you haven't got. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, what? Sorry, what? Sorry. <laughs> I'm in. D F O R Gash. D for Gash. Maybe not. A D asks, why don't you have one million subscribers? Yes, you're that good. A. It's just a long process. I think about on my on my. You can check all your analytics on your channel. It's only like forty percent of people. No, forty percent of people are subscribed to me. Like sixty percent of people who watch my content are not subscribed. So it just grows. It's... I, I'm guilty of that. Yeah. See, it happened because. Yeah. YouTube doesn't even want you to subscribe, really. It, because as soon as you've clicked on something, YouTube knows to send it to you. So once you've clicked on something two or three times, people almost think they're subscribed. Um, but yeah, there's, I think there's like 120,000 people that tune into my channel monthly or something like that. I don't know. But it'll get there one day. Another great question. I'd love to know how I can get a Monte Carlo plant carpet without CO2. <sighs> Long time and intense lighting and being very clever with not letting the algae grow on it. It's just, it's just a tricky game to be honest. I've multi carpet. I've had growing a fall under one of the... Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what was the, what was the uh, nin, uh, flat nano. Yeah. Um, that was growing so well underneath that. And that was a bowl with just some substrate. I'd say if you don't want CMT, just give it everything else you, you can give it. Decent substrate, uh, liquid fertilizer, liquid CO2... And just really keep a close eye on it. Um, and just, yeah, if you start getting algae, decrease the light, maybe dose it with more of the liquid CO2. Um, but it can be done. It can be done. It's just way slower. And you've got to be a bit more on top of it. Yeah, I'll put a load of the Monte Carlo on my little waterfall that's on my shrimp bar. And it's now like a little hedge. It's growing so quickly up above the water line. It's just growing along the edge. Nice. It made me realise all these plants that we walk, apart, walk past in the rivers. Yeah, yeah. And there's these little sprigs of weeds growing along the edges of our rivers. That Monte Carlo is probably that's what it's doing. Yeah, it's exactly you know, that. Where it's from, yeah. Like, yeah, you know. But yeah, it's um, yeah, it's all that sort of thing. I realised growing it on the waterfall, it's growing so quickly and it looks great, but it just looks like a weed in your garden now. Daniel asks, this is day three of asking you to do escape with obsidian. I know, I've seen it. I'm, I'm on day three of trying to find enough obsidian to escape with. I found something close in the shop the other day, but it wasn't quite. So, yeah, I, I do want to do it. I quite like the idea of it. So, uh, but yeah, once I find 20 kilos at a decent price, then we're game off. Okay. Uh, Question about us. What sets NT Labs apart from other brands? That beautiful place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you genuinely are partially sighted, aren't you? <laughs> I just have low standards. <laughs> uh, uh, that's a really difficult question to answer without really waving a corporate flag. It's just going to um, sound like you are. Yeah, okay. it's just going to sound like a walking advert. Uh, I think, yeah, people first and foremost. Um, I would agree with that. I'm lucky enough to work with a really strong team of people who are invested in what they're doing, what they're doing okay. in their job. I, think- I am, yeah. You know, it's really difficult to 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 sort of sing the praises of your colleagues without them going, "Are you being nice to me?" <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. all sarcastic. Yeah, that's usually it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just the fact that we believe in what we're doing. We try to um, put the the needs of the fish keeper over a pound note. Yeah. Um, I think that you know the fact that we're all genuinely fish keepers. Um, yeah, the the and word the word that we've said several times the the fact that we're invested in the hobby we're invested in looking after the livestock or in creating a new product that will make fish keepers' lives easier. Yeah, I, I, and I think and I'd, I'd ask Paul to leave the room at this point, but I think the fact that it's a family family business, it, we all matter. We all. 
um, make a difference. We're not just a number. We're not just a corporate machine. E everybody matters. Every what everybody does matters as well as the individuals. I, I just think you know it's a bit of a combination of stuff. Um, the fact that we do things very well um, for the right reasons, I think, is probably a fairest assessment I can give without really going for it. How would you see it, Matt? Because you've obviously worked in retail recent, more recently than Dave and I, yeah. and you've obviously had those other brands on the shelves and you've dealt with people. What What's your take on that question? So very much like, like Dave would say, like a lot of other brands, and it's not, you know, a lot of other brands are sort of faceless. They're, they're a, you know, where they're getting food from, who knows what they're putting into the food, but whereas you guys put a lot of content out on YouTube and, and you're very, like, you don't launch products like there's no tomorrow. There's not like, oh, there's another 20 foods come out tomorrow and there's another this and another that. You you work behind the scenes a lot on the product to then make the launch a success. Whereas, you know, it, it can be, it's very easy to, go off to a wholesaler you know we all know the apps on our phone that we can buy stuff direct from places and it's very easy to go over there and get a label stuck on something ship it across and all of a sudden yeah i've got 400 products but you guys don't do that you guys spend the time working on something and there's and, and people don't see that people don't see the months or if you know, years of some of the development and work that goes into some of the products they just see the box on the shelves mm. And so that's why I like it. I'm sure there's development in other brands and other companies like that, but to have something in the UK trying to pioneer that is huge. And like I say, you've always always made me feel welcome when I'm here, and it's just a really nice atmosphere. I, you know, the, the product speaks for themselves. Like I've never had anything really that's like turned its nose up at any of the foods or any of the products that don't work. They all do what they say on the tin and really well. Quite nice to hear. Thank you very, yeah. Thank you very much. And I think we'll, we're, we've been in the game long enough. We're quite well supported by the consumer. We know if we don't do it right, they're not going to come back. And you know, been around now forty odd years. Um, I think yeah, it just it, it encourages us to invest in the business in the hobby. And like Dave said, if we can make it easier, more people do it. Yeah. And then that harks back to what you were saying about the more people that that are then introduced to fish keeping the bigger the industry gets the more is invested the easier it gets the nicer it looks yeah, the more technology we get it, oh. it's all a, a massive thing to move the sort of forward i'm i you know i i mean i like mountain biking and all of this and i've seen it all sort of happen in those industries already like yeah. they've yeah. been ahead of the fish keeping industry yeah. and until i was involved in the social media side of things and youtube and stuff i didn't realize that we weren't as a fish keeping group, we weren't quite there. No. Um, but we're getting there. We are we are getting there. I think that's a great place to wrap up. Um, Matt, your support is brilliant. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank not you for really, supporting the channel. Well, not really so much that. I mean the, the support in terms of to the hobby. Um, you know, just you, you know, you giving me some of these questions to read through from some of your subscribers is is brilliant. And I, I think it's a real testament to yourself, your honesty um and and the way you can convey what you've learned in a in a in a really enjoyable way to watch i think yeah it's testament to you so thank you very much Dan. That's, so much. that's the plan of the challenge let's uh down the pub with your friend talking about yes. a bit. Yeah. are we going to the pub yeah <laughs> it's that time <laughs> great thanks guys thank you very much It got quite West Country at times there. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I did hear the accent coming out from both of you. All right, now. <laughs> so we, we can put subtitles across the bottom. <laughs> like Gerald from Clarkson's Farm. <laughs> <laughs>